By 1998, everyone had taken shots at Nintendo during the video game of Thrones. Hey, plumber boy, mustache man, your worst nightmare has arrived. The most common marketing strategy, besides weird sexual stuff, was claiming to have more power. The Sega Genesis has blast processing. Super Nintendo doesn't. Do not underestimate the power of PlayStation. And for Sony, it almost worked. The PlayStation sold 102 million units, three times more than the Nintendo 64. Not even Ocarina of Time, which is still the highest rated game of all time, could compete with the unlimited power of CD-ROM. I mean, wow. It doesn't get more realistic than that, said middle schoolers everywhere. But Nintendo had an ace in the home of more gamers than any console in history. A ten-year-old brick that not only had survived multiple console wars, but actual wars with, like, bombs and stuff. The Game Boy. With less power than any device still on the market, with graphics only slightly better than an Etch-a-Sketch, Nintendo claimed the Iron Throne. Pokemon has become the highest-grossing media franchise of all time, making the never-ending console wars look like dancing lessons. Very dead. Harry Potter, Star Wars, and even Mickey Mouse bend the knee to the monsters in your pocket. When Nintendo announced they were going back to the Kanto region where it all started 20 years ago, and my boyfriend could relive becoming the very best like no one ever was, I was like, I want to play, just for, I've never played one before, I really wanted to play this game. Okay, click it. Don't come asking me how to catch a oh caterpillar. Oh my god. You're telling me this isn't my game? It's our <laughs> game. This is my game. Should I be Shelby or Swilby? <laughs> Sharked. <laughs> you know that I played this game growing up. Just for five minutes. I just want five minutes. What's your rival's name? Well, I know what my rival's name is. This is some BS, <laughs> man. Mart? <laughs> the heck is that? So, this isn't a review of what it's like to live with someone who plays Pokemon Let's Go. This is a review of what it's like to live with someone who has to watch me go on his nostalgia trip. It was this amazing, beautiful experience. Nobody cares. Here's a list of things my boyfriend regrets trading into GameStop for a quarter. Chrono Trigger, Super Mario RPG, and the Wind Waker Metroid combo. Well done. Don't put it in your pocket, sir. Don't put it in your pocket, it's your lucky quarter. Where you want me to put it? But there is one thing, one memory, one accomplishment that he's kept safe for two decades. His oldest possession, an atomic purple Game Boy Color and Pokemon Red. Occasionally, he'll pull it out, pop in some double A's, and check to see if the game's internal battery has died, which will eventually kill all 151 of his Pokemon. They say it's only supposed to last 10 years, and it's been 20. But it is not this day! This day we fight! Those eight badges and 47 hours had a huge impact on his childhood, meaning this remake holds real sentimental value to him. So you can imagine how funny it was to buy the game for myself. Strybones. It's Cubone. <laughs> I'm gonna kill you. Only being familiar with the anime, knowing absolutely nothing about the battle mechanics, and just generally being stupid at video games made me feel like I'd invented a new form of torture. I put my boyfriend through 28 hours of this. So water is good against fire, but fire isn't good against water. No. Okay, why? Hello? Why? Nobody <laughs> can tell water with fire. Luckily, the game has a co-op mode which let my boyfriend do a superhero landing for some reason and go adventuring with me. Unluckily, the co-op Co-op mode is garbage and gave him less control than Twitch plays Pokemon. He was so excited by the promise of exploring Kanto with me, but within mere seconds was like, So that was a f***ing lie. Player 2 can't do anything in the overworld. He can't interact with Pokemon or pick up items. He can't read a sign. And whenever I talk to someone, he just flies away like socially awkward Superman. You know, it's unusual finding a good looking girl like you alone like this. He described the experience as happily returning to the town he grew up in, only to discover that he was a ghost in limbo. Which made me feel like Macaulay Joel Oscorp. I see dead people. Other than be my shadow, Player 2 can only do two things. First is help waste my Pokeballs on this inaccurate, inconsistent minigame. What? The? That's not where I threw it at all. <laughs> if we combined our throws and we were both blessed by the motion control gods, we could increase our chances of catching Pokemon. Ooh. Nice. Excellent. Unfortunately, we were about as coordinated as a seventh grade kiss and often just smashed our Joy-Cons together. Three. <laughs> Ow, you Three. hit me. <laughs> 
Second, he can control an additional Pokémon on the battlefield, which totally breaks the combat design. Two-on-one simply isn't fair or fun. We think a more balanced, more engaging way for Player 2 to participate in battle would be randomized quick-time events during animations that could boost Player 1's attack or lower the opponent's. But what the heck do we know? We make fart jokes on the internet. It seems like Player 2 in a lot of Switch games is designed for a niche audience of annoying younger brothers. Whatever happened to just letting him hold an unplugged Mad Cat's controller? My boy friend actually decided that Let's Go's co-op was ruining the experience and volunteered to fly away forever. I said, no, don't go, but was secretly like, this is where the fun begins. Pokemon Let's Go Salami is the second game I've ever beaten, and I didn't cry this time, but I absolutely loved it. I doubt there exists a more colorful, adorable, stress-free introduction to turn-based RPGs, which makes you feel like your Fisher Price. It had just enough Nintendogs and just enough Love Nikki Dress Up Queen. <laughs> and just enough hugging Snorlax oh my God! to convince me that Rock, Paper, Scissors is good core gameplay. I'll be honest, I never really memorized any of this and just guessed my way through every battle without losing a single time. So either this is the easiest game ever made, or more likely, I was born the very best, like my boyfriend never was. To catch them really hurt my wrist, to pet them is my cause. I will dress them in Ray-Bans and use them for a ride. Each Pokemon I will backhand until they want to cry. Pokemon, gotta go up. It's you and me. Only it's not really. Pokemon, oh, you're my boyfriend in a mode I can't defend. Pokemon, gotta go up. You're player too. It's ruining it for me, dude. I've watched you, now you watch me play my game. Got a flower toast, got the victory road, a la me. All right, guys, thanks for watching. We're still playing Sekiro, so be sure to stop by Twitch. And if my boyfriend gets good, we can review it next Saturday. This Sunday, we'll be streaming a collaboration with Illimation for Yoshi's Crafted World. I hope you liked our Pokemon video and that you have a good weekend. Okay, thanks again. Bye!